family mode. Hello everyone and welcome to our stock management webinar. My name is Beth and I'll be taking you through this webinar today. First of all, a few housekeeping. The duration of this webinar will be approximately 30 to 40 minutes. Your speakers must be turned on to hear and my microphone is on. Everybody else has automatically been muted. So if you've got any questions throughout today, then the questions can be taken throughout the chat box. So if you have any questions, just pop them in the chat box and we'll get them at the end during our questions and answers session. So the learning outcomes for today. So at the end of this webinar, you will be able to understand the relationships of products, suppliers. You'll be able to add in suppliers, companies, lines and products. You'll be able to understand the product setup screen, understand product levels and how they work, be able to process and receive an order, understand how to evaluate product movement. And you'll also be able to understand the stock controls um, run through as well. So first of all, understanding your product supplier relationship. So a lot of people get confused as to what a supplier is versus what a company is within shortcuts. So we thought the best way to do this was just to do a quick run through of exactly what these are. So you understand as we're talking about them, what each, what each thing means. So a supplier is where we buy from. So the supplier sometimes isn't the same as the company. The company is the brand of the product, whereas the supplier is where we actually buy it from. So it could be a wholesaler's or it could sometimes be directly from the company or brand. The line is then a range of products. So the line would be a particular styling range or particular cleansing range. And then the product is the individual product name. So wherever we reference these throughout the webinar, it's always useful for you to know exactly what each of these means. So now what we're going to do is we're going to walk you through how to add a new supplier, how to add a new company, how to add a new line, and also how to add in a new product as well. So in shortcuts, you'll see that I'm on the product screen. So to get into a product screen, it's underneath stock and then into products. So whenever we're adding in any new stock, what we do need to do is we need to, first of all, set up our supplier. So down the bottom, I've got a sort by and there's a drop down option in there. I've got my supplier. If I click on supplier, you'll see that it will give me any suppliers that I've already set up. If I want to create a new supplier, if I click on business and press new, this will then give me a, a block for me to be able to add in the supplier name. So in this instance, I'm going to call it salon services. Once I've selected my block, I can just click and that will make it blue and you'll see that that's then stored. If I want to add any details about my supplier, I've then got a details tab at the bottom. If I click on details, you'll see that it will then bring up the details tab. And the details tab will then ask for a bit of information such as the address, town, phone number, name and any rep details. So you can add in any email addresses. So once we've added in our supplier details, we're then going to go back to our company line. So I'm going to click on company line at the top. And now I'm going to add in my company line. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on business. And then I'm going to press new. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in my company name. So my company name is going to be uh, styling just making it up and then you can see that once I've selected new I can then click on my default supplier once I've selected my default supplier so I've linked up my supplier to my company then what that means is every time that I add in a any products underneath it will automatically then link up to that company name and automatically to that supplier so for ordering purposes it's really important that we make sure that all of our products are linked to the correct suppliers we'll hit done 
and I've now added in my product company and then if I click on my product company and press new I can then add in a range so I'm going to add in a cleansing range or cleansing line and then once I've done that I'll then click on the cleansing line press new and then I can add in the product so we'll call this shampoo and I'd always recommend just popping in the size I can then add in the buy price which is going to be five pounds and my sell price is going to be ten and that's how we add in a product so we, what we've done is we've added in a supplier we've added in a company we've added in a line and then we've added in a product as well So now we're going to have a look at personalising your product screen. So within shortcuts, you can choose exactly what you do and don't see. So at the top of your bar, you'll see that you've got options um, for what columns that you can see. You can actually add or remove. So to add or remove, if you right click on the bar at the top of your stock screen, so at the top of your product screen, and then you'll see that you get the drop down. And then if you click on, so for example, levels, We'll then get an extra box which then gives us the extra options and anything that's ticked is then showing and if you don't want it to show if you tick it again it will then untick. You can also make products inactive and that's through the inactive tick against each product. You can then go to the show me inactive if you wish to bring a product back. So you can make products inactive and then you can bring them back at a later date. You can also set products to retail or professional. So retail were products that we are allowed to sell at point of sale, whereas our professional stock means that we're not allowed to sell those products. So therefore, uh, those products are kept in the back end, but we can still stock control and we can do, still do our order and our stock control on those products. To do that, you'll see at the end of each line, there is an option and there's a drop down for professional or retail. If you can't see the re retail professional column, then all you need to do is right click, go into your properties and then go to your retail and then that will then bring up the column. So that's personalising your products. So once you've personalised your products, you can also lock. So you can lock that selection that you've done. So every time you come in, you don't have to come back and keep looking at it. Researching. So understanding your stock levels. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at our stock levels. So once we've got our columns in order, then the main ones that we would want to look at are our current level. So our current level is how many you currently have in stock. And as you can see through our little uh, red information, the current level is controlled by our sales, by receiving orders and through our stock takes. So that current level is working for us all the time. We then have a minimum level. So our minimum level is the minimum number that we will allow our products to get to on the shelf. So that's the minimum we want our, our products to fall to. Once they hit below that, then that's when shortcuts will start the trigger for ordering. The maximum level is the maximum number of products we want in stock. So shortcuts is quite clever that it will work between those minimum and maximum levels to get you back up to your required stock level. And then our order multiple. Our order multiple is used when we have pack sizes. So this would be where the supplier always supplies us a pack of six. So whenever we're ordering, even if we only needed to order three, Shortcuts would know and it will automatically order us back up to that six. So it will always order us six at any one time. So your stock levels can also be tracked individually in the product details tab. So if you click on products and into details, so once you've clicked on your product, if you click details, you'll see that there's a box called product details. This gives you a bit of information about those levels and this just gives it individually. So if you didn't want to have it looking down the columns, if you wanted to go into each product individually, you can do. And the product details will give you all the information in there. There is also a minimum reorder quantity and this minimum reorder quantity overrides that maximum level we were talking about before. 
This is used when a supplier will only accept orders over a certain number. So let's say we always want there to be a maximum of six on the shelf. So Shortcuts wants to order three or four at any one time. But what it will do is if the supplier would give you a better discount if you ordered 10 at a time, then what you could do is set your minimum reorder to 10. So even if I only need to order four, it will automatically order me 10. So this can be set individually in the details against each product. So now we're going to have a look at our stock control. So our stock control is key to ensuring our product levels are correct. As we said, those current levels are working all the time, but without our stock control, how do we keep a tight rein on exactly what stock we've got in? So our stock control is done through our stock and our stock take. And we would recommend rotating your stock takes. Usually what we would recommend is by looking at a product company per week. So then at least every three, four weeks, depending how many product companies you've got, you're then rotating. So you're counting that stock, stock company every so often. So every four weeks, every six weeks. Rather than completing one massive one, which takes a lot of time. So you find that doing it in bite-sized chunks is much easier. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go and have a look at our stock taking. So in our stock and into stock take, this is where we do our stock takes. So what I'm going to do is just walk you through a brief stock take just so you get make sure that everybody's doing it correctly. You get the understanding of how it flows. So if in our stock take screen, if we hit new, and then we then give it a name. So for this purposes, I'm going to call it training. As you can see, I've done a couple. So I'm going to call this one training three. Once I've given my description, so my description would be a particular product company. As you can see, it automatically dates it. So you know the last time that you did um, a stock take on that particular company or even that particular line. Once I hit next, it's then going to take me into my stock take. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, so I'm setting up my stock take, I'm going to press add. So I press add and then I can go in and I can choose a whole company by clicking on a grey box. I can choose multiple companies. Or if I wanted to just do a particular line, I could click on the line, the grey box next to the line. Or if I just wanted to do a stock take on two or three products, I could just choose those individual products as well. Once I'm happy, then I'm just going to press add and then I'm going to press done. And you'll see that that's now set up my stock level. So my stock takes pretty much ready. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to start. So I'm going to click start at the bottom and it says, do you wish to activate and yes. So then it's given me some options to print out some reports. The main one that I want is the top one, which is called our stock take form. And what this does is it gives you a printout of the products in that particular order. And I can then go away and I can go and count the products on a piece of paper and I can come back and then enter those values in. Once I've selected, if I hit done, then that's going to do my printout. And then once I'm happy and I've done my printout, I'm then just going to enter my values into the count. So if I enter my values in, You'll see that what Shortcuts does is it looks at the computer count. So you can see here's the computer count, and this is what Shortcuts expected there to be. So it's checking and it's telling me, the red ones are showing me that there's a discrepancy. So I've just said that I've only got two, but I should have three. And I've said that I've got four of the strength serum, but I've only, I should have six. So it's just highlighting that there's an issue. If I still want to continue, I can hit finish. And it will ask me, am I sure I want to complete this stock take? And yes. And then what it will do is it will highlight those products that don't tally. So if you're counting lots and lots of products at any one time, it will get rid of all the ones that are correct. And any of the ones that don't match that computer count, it will then highlight them and ask if you wish to do a recount. If you choose now, then it will store these count figures as your current level. If you say yes, it will then allow you to print out a form, take it away and do a recount and just double check those figures. So for today's purpose, I'm just going to hit no and I'm going to commit those levels to my current level. And congratulations, you've 
successfully completed a stock take. And my product levels are now being updated in the product screen, so my current level will now reflect that. So that's our stock take. So now we're going to have a look at our ordering and receiving. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at how to create an order through shortcuts and then we're going to look at how to receive an order through shortcuts. So this is in our stock and then ordering section. Shortcuts will automatically work out your ordering needs based on your current levels, your minimums, your maximum levels. It will then also take into consideration any order multiples um, and any minimum reorder quantities that you have set up as well. So the idea is that once you've done a stock take, Shortcuts will do all the work for you based on you selling products, using products, you deduct them from the system and then the ordering should hopefully be bang on for exactly what you need. So now I'm just going to pop back into Shortcuts again and we'll go through an order. So we're going to have a look at placing an order and we're going to have a look at um, receiving an order as well. Cool. So I'm in the ordering screen. So I've got here through going to stock and then going to ordering. In here, I can look at any outstanding orders, any received orders and maybe any orders that I've already saved. If I want to place a new order, I come in and I go to my drop down. So I'm going to choose a Weller order and I'm going to press new. It's then going to ask me, do I want to do, so standard all would be all the Weller products. Standard retail would be standard retail products. So it looks at just the retail products. Standard professional would look at professional products only. And a promotion would be where I can specify so that would be where I've got a product that's coming in that is the same as a similar product in the system, but it's not already in the system. So you can kind of do a same as. So if I had a shampoo and it's the same as another shampoo that's in the system, I can get shortcuts to work out based on how that other shampoo does. What do you think I need to order? So just for today, I'm going to do a standard all. And this is going to bring up my order. So you can see it's automatically worked out what I need to do. Now, this isn't set in stone, so this is just giving you a rough idea of what you need to purchase, but you can go through and change the quantities. So I can change a quantity to say two. I can go through and I can add extra products on if I wish. So I can go through and add extra products on if I think there's a particular product that's selling really well at the moment. So I'm just going to add that on. Or I can delete, so I can click on some products and just delete them off if I know that I can wait another week or so. So once I'm happy with my order, you can see down the bottom it's giving me a subtotal and this is based on my buy prices. It's then working out the VAT and it's giving me a total order price. So it gives me a rough idea of how much this order is going to cost. So again for budgeting, I can find out exactly how much it's going to cost me to get this order in place. If I was working on this and I needed to go away or make appointments, I can hit save and then that save would then hold it on that first page as we saw previously. If I'm happy to place the order, then all I'm going to do is click order. And are you happy to place this order? Yes. And then mine's just giving me the option to print. So you hit OK if you wish to print it out and then go away and phone it through. If you set up an email address in your supplier, then what it will do is the first thing it will do is it will ask you if you wish to email the supplier with that order. And it pops it onto an email as a PDF. The order has been placed successfully. So I chose to print and I hit done. And you'll see that my order is now under outstanding. So when that order comes in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my delivery to come in. I'm going to check it against my delivery note, make sure that everything that's on the delivery note tallies with what's in my delivery box. And then the delivery note would come to the shortcuts, so it would come to the, the PC at reception. What I'm going to do then is I'm then going to go into back into stock and ordering, and I'm going to find that order that's currently outstanding. And you'll see down the bottom I've got a receive option. So if I click receive, all it's going to do is it's just bringing back up what I ordered. 
Now, I've got some options here. So again, I can go through and change my quantities. So if I didn't receive eight, maybe I received 10 of a particular product, I can go through and change that. I can also, again, I've still got my add and my delete options where I can add and delete. So I can add any products that were given to me, maybe some free products, and I can delete products if I didn't receive them. I also have a couple of options. So if I know that I got a discount, I can do an order discount, which would give a discount off the whole bill. So by clicking order discount and then entering in either a percentage or a fixed amount, that would then take it off. Or I can give individual line discounts. So if I know that I got this product for free and I got all 10 products for free, I could type in 100% discount and done. And then that would then give me a line discount. So it just takes the discount off those products individually and not off everything else. If I know that I paid any postage or packaging, I can add that on. And the good idea with this is that you're receiving the actual order. So what it will do is it will give you, when you're looking back, you're able to actually look at what you received and the figures that um, were around that. So you can track it against the invoice when the invoice comes in. The final thing we want to do is add in an invoice number or a delivery number. This would be a reference number that would be on your delivery slip. So for argument's sake, I'm just going to add a number in there. Once I'm happy, I'm completely happy with all of this, I'm going to hit receive. It says, do you wish to proceed with receiving this invoice? And yes. And then the order has been received successfully. And what that does is it adds all those quantities now into my current levels within my product screen. You'll see now that it's moved from under outstanding and it now sits underneath received. So. In our ordering, as I said, all our outstanding orders can be tracked. So we can track on the ordering screen, as we saw previously. So we can track under in the ordering section and then under outstanding, it will give us the date that we ordered it and the price that we ordered. We can also track in our reports. So into tools, reports, stock, there is an outstanding orders report. And this report will give you a breakdown of all orders placed during that period. So if you specify a particular date, it will then show you all outstanding orders currently that you're still waiting to come back in. So a couple of ways that we can track our orders and where we're up to. We can also track our received orders. So again, on our ordering screen, underneath received, we can see our received orders. And also in our report. We can see, so in tools, reports, stock and stock receive summary, there is our stock receive summary report, which gives us our overall about how much we've ordered, when we placed the order, when we received it. We then have, we also have our tools, reports, stock and stock received. And in there, we have our stock received, and this gives you a bit more information. So this gives you a breakdown of each product that was received and how many days you had to wait for the order since ordering and then receiving that order. So we're also going to have a look at how we evaluate our stock movement. So stock movement can be tracked, and it is tracked within shortcuts. And it, we can track it within our stock movement details. So again, that details tab we talked about earlier. So into products, into details, and in that details tab, there is a movement history. And in there, we can see all the information regarding that individual product. So it will show us if somebody's done a manual update, when we've done a stock take, um, when we've done changes. So we've changed something from 20 to one. Um, and also we've done a stock take where we've increased it from one to three. And then we can also see that we received an order of seven there. So that gave us a quantity of 10. So it gives us an overall of when we, whenever anything's gone on within the product. If we've also done any sales with that product, it will also show. There is also a stock movement history report. And this report can be found in tools, reports, stock, and then stock movement history.
And this gives us, an, so this breaks down all the products again, and it breaks them down and shows us all our movement. So any, it, what it does is it clumps them together, so it'll put all the manual updates together, all the purchases together, all the ordering and all the receiving, and all the stock taking. So you'll be able to see the movement within areas rather than by individual product. So for individual product, I'd go into the details tab. But if you just want an overall look in at what was received versus what was manual updates, you can then go into your report and your stock movement history report. So a couple of really good reports to be able to monitor exactly what's going on. So we've got a couple of other stock reports that we find are useful. So the stock control report. So this one's found in tools, reports, stock, and it's our stock control report. And what this looks like, it looks at our individual current level. So it tells us how many we've currently got in. It will tell us our individual maximum level. It gives us an on order, so it will show us how many of those products are currently on order. It gives us a total in stock, so it gives us a total overall. It gives us a total on order overall, and it gives us a total value on hand. So it looks at both individual and total for all products. And as I've put, this report will help you monitor your current stock levels and static stock over time. One of the other stock reports that we like is our top selling products. This is really useful and can be found under tools, reports, stock and our top selling products. This will show us over a period of time how many products have been sold and we can help identify our top selling products. It can help identify our low selling products and it can also identify products by profit. So it gives us a breakdown of those products that are high in profit and those that are low in profit. And then we can help incentivize the staff, as we've talked about in previous webinars, incentivizing the staff to look at the high profit products is always more beneficial to the company than the low pro profit products. Cool. So that's walked you through our stock management. Hopefully you've taken a few good ideas from there and you can go and implement them in your salons. So you should now be able to understand the relationships of products and suppliers, be able to add suppliers, companies, lines and products, understand the product setup screen, understand product levels and how they work, be able to process and receive an order and understand how to evaluate product movement as well as being able to understand some of our stock reports and being able to do that stock control. So now it's our questions and answers so I'm just going to have an easy and see if anybody has left me any questions. Cool, so I've had a question about monitoring colours used in salons. So what we tend to do is we have a process around monitoring our colour usage um, and that would be that anybody that um, uses a colour, so once a colour tube is empty, um, we usually would keep that in what we call a stock bin. So that stock bin would be in the colour bar, for example. Um, the empty tube goes in the stock bin and then you can then check out. So you check it out through point of sale against hash business, who you will see in the client list. Um, and then there is a report called our professional stock usage, where you can then track what colours have been used over a period. So you can analyse that. Um, and then it will also knock it off that current level. So then your ordering should be absolutely spot, spot on. Cool. Is there any way to add a bulk product? So I'm assuming by that, do you mean adding on multiple products? Unfortunately, there isn't. It's just a case of adding them in, in individually one by one. If you do have a product list, um, a huge product list, then um, you can contact us and um, our business development team would be able to talk to you about that. Um, just go and have a look. There's a couple of questions in here. This is good. So product buy in price, should you put the value plus VAT or minus VAT? So the product buy price should always be excluding VAT. Um, so the VAT should always be 
uh, sorry, the product uh, buy-in should always be XFAT. And the reason for this is that shortcuts will then add the VAT on top because that's what you would identify your whenever you get them from your suppliers. That would be the value that you would look at and they always add the VAT on top. Um, so Leslie's asked again about the colours. So just let you know, Leslie, I can add, I can send you the guide over for how to um, do the whole stock process. So with regards to the professional stock with the colours, um, yeah, you just literally select them at point of sale and it will give you all the colours. I've had another one about products. So moving products, you can't move products once you've set up a product. You can't move it from um, a company. So if you've got it under the wrong company or the wrong line, you can't move it from one um, product, com product company to another. Um, you have to make it inactive and add it in again. Now, if it's a supplier, yes, you can. Um, in the supplier screen, you are able to drag products down and drop them under different suppliers. So depending what you mean, um, depends whether you can actually do it or not. So if you set your minimum of two and your current is two, how will it come up on an order? So if you set your minimum of two and your current level is two, it won't come up on an order. It looks below. So what it does is it looks below that minimum. So if you want two to be your trigger, that when you get to two, you want to order more, then I would always recommend setting your minimum to be three. Therefore, it will always sit above. So I'm running out a little bit of time um, and I've got lots and lots more questions to run through. So what I'll do is I'll do a quick write up at the end and ping those out to you on an email with just a breakdown of all of those options, all those questions so that you can then um, get the answers. And if there are any guides or anything that I need, then I will drop those over to you as well. So finally, um, we have some new helpful tools. So I don't know if anybody's been on our YouTube account, um, but on our YouTube account, it's Shortcuts UK. We've got lots of different um, tools now on there. So little two to five minute videos about how to's. So quick how to's on different areas. So there's a couple of um, product ones, as you can see, these are the ones that we'd recommend based on the ones that we based on what we've been talking about today. So there's a few different things that you can go on and have a look at. Um, just go on and watch them in your own time. And as I said, if you go on the YouTube channel, they're all there. Um, and please feel free to go and have a look at any of the other ones that are on there as well. If you want to register for any more webinars, then if you keep your eye on our website, obviously we'll then send the emails out to you all as well. Um, but keep your eye on those future webinars. Um, and if you've missed any or you want to watch this one again, or you want to get somebody else to watch it, then it should be uploaded shortly and you'll find it in our webinar library on our Shortcuts UK website. Should you want to get in touch with us, then please contact the education team. Um, our email is education at shortcuts.co.uk. You can also contact us on Facebook. We are also on Twitter. Um, or you can give us a call on the standard number. Or, as I said, just drop us a quick email on the education email address. Thank you very much for your time, and I'll speak to you shortly.